Welcome to another DIY video. Before calling the professional, maybe it's DIYable. This time, we are talking about fire hazard of extension cord. A lot of us use extension cord in the house. I can tell you, I had very bad experience with my central vac. It burned the plastic. Look, it can also burn my house down. In this video, I am going to talk about the cause of the problem. You may think circuit breaker would have protected you. Nope, it won't. Even if you religiously follow the building code and buy good quality UL listed products, this can still happen to you. You need to understand the physics behind it and have a strategy to avoid this. Many of you have electric vehicle. How to use the 240 volt extension cord safely is another topic you don't want to miss. Finally, I will show you how to fix the burned extension cord. Going back to my central vac in my garage, this extension cord has been sitting here for almost 7 years. As you can see, I wrapped the cord around the central vac PVC pipe. That was a big mistake. The problem did not start in just one day, it happened over the years. Yes, that's right, the cause of the problem is vibration. It makes the extension cords having loose contact. This can generate an electric arc. The temperature is so high that it melts the plastic. Central vac is a high power consumption appliance. It draws 13 amp at 120 volt. Let me give you a quick demonstration. I have a 1200 watt heat gun. Yo, going back to school. P equals IV. 1200 watts divided by 120 volt. We have 10 amp. That's way less than my central vac running at 13 amp. Now let's see what happens. To set up this experiment, we turn on the heat gun. Under normal conditions, even with the appliance is on and you quickly plug it in, there shouldn't be any issues. Sometimes you just get a very small spark, which is okay, it's not gonna kill you. Now, things can get ugly when we have loose contact caused by vibration. You may ask, why the circuit breaker doesn't trip? Well, the circuit breaker only protects overloading circuit. In this case, it's not overloading at all. My breaker is rated at 15 amp and we are drawing 10 amp. The breaker is doing what it is supposed to do. Remember the stupid TikTok penny challenge a year ago? This does not necessarily trip the breaker, but it can start a fire. It's dangerous enough even my extension cord is UL and CSA listed. To be fair, if your extension cord is not UL, ETL or CSA listed, the situation will be worse, the plastic will continue to burn. On top of that, there are fake UL listed extension cord on the market. UL has a video showing you how dangerous it is, I will post the link in the description. Here is another DIY tips of the day. When you buy new extension cord, look for the one comes with a lock, it cannot move unless you unlock it. For any other extension cords that don't have a lock, use electrical tape to secure the connection point. There is one simple but expensive solution is to upgrade the 15 amp breaker to AFCI breaker in the main panel for the garage receptacles. Indeed, if your house was built after 1999 in the States or 2002 in Canada, you already have AFCI in all your bedrooms. In other words, the stupid TikTok penny challenge would not be successful if the kids did it in the bathroom. Going back to my central vac extension cord is a waste to throw that away. I am going to fix it. Pay attention to the label on the cord. It says 13 amp. Now, if you read it carefully, it says 16 AWG. See the table here. 16 gauge cable is rated at 13 amp. You can get any size extension cord such as 16, 14 or 12, you will be fine. However, if you have a heavy duty machinery, see the cord here, it says 14 AWG, that means it's drawing 15 amp. Now, if you go out and buy a 16 gauge extension cord for this, good luck to you, the plastic on the cord will melt and potentially start a fire. It's very dangerous. Because of the 80% rule, to avoid tripping the breaker, you should use 12 gauge extension cord on a 20 amp breaker instead of 15 amp. That's electrical 101. Going back to the repair. Because it's burned, it doesn't smell good. I am going to cut it off just like that. Next, we are going to get to the wires inside.
Now this part is very important. You want to cut the wires in different length with roughly one inch apart. Strip the wires using your favorite tool. At this point, we have black color wire being the longest, green color wire being the shortest, and white color wire with the length in between. Moving on to the other side, we are going to do similar. But we are going to do the opposite. Make the black color wire shortest, the green color wire longest, and the white color wires remain the same with the length in between. Next, we are going to slide the heat shrink tubing into all the wires. You need to do this before soldering or you will be very screwed. The next part is pretty much self-explanatory. Get the soldering gun and get all the connection points together. There are two reasons why we want to do this. First, in case the wire got exposed, the hot wire will not be able to touch the neutral. Secondly, this will make the final thickness consistent with the rest of the cable. Use the heat gun to shrink the rubber. Then, use some good quality electrical tape to wrap the hot wire for extra protection. Continue to wrap all three wires together and make it into one single plastic wrap. Alright, we have successfully turned two extension cords into one single cord. Vibration will not be able to cause any damage anymore. Notice that this is not building code or electrical code compliant. Do this at your own risk. Let's fire up the central vac and see what happens. It doesn't get warm at all and I didn't get electrocuted. Soldering and his string wrap is strong enough to withstand the vibration. I think you would agree that was a successful repair. Although extension cord can be dangerous, it doesn't stop me from using one on my electric vehicle. I bought this 6 gauge extension cord rated at 50 amp on 240 volt. To avoid electric art that can potentially burn your house down, you need to do more than just plug and play. I have a dedicated video showing you how to install that safely. Check out that video, I will post the link in the description. Give this a thumbs up if you think this video has some good information. My goal is to inspire more people into DIY. I hope that helps. You may also want to check out other videos on my channel. I am pretty sure you will love them. Remember to subscribe. Thanks for watching and see you next time.